I am so excited today to welcome John and David from the Debt Free Guys and Queer Money Podcast. They are really on a mission to help the LGBTQ community live fabulously, but not fabulously broke. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for having, having us. us. Yeah, I'm excited to jump in because you guys found yourself in a lot of credit card debt. And this is something that I think so many of us struggle with, whether we slowly accumulate it or whether kind of a life crisis piles it on. So John, I would love to hear with you and your story, what got you into this credit card debt and kind of what was that process like? When I graduated college, I had no credit card debt at all and I moved out to Denver. Um, it was my first time on my own and I felt like I needed to be an adult. And I racked up about $35,000 worth of credit card debt um, in about a year and a half or so. And I realized in hindsight that um, there were two things going on. One, I was making up for uh, a, a rough childhood, being bullied and picked on and treated differently when I was going through grade school and high school. Um, so I was trying to make up for the past. But then also at the same time, um, I had found my new gay community and I didn't want to be ostracized by them. So I felt like if I didn't live up to a certain expectation, if I didn't have the right clothing, I didn't go to the right parties and um, do all the right travel, that I would be ostracized by another community. So it was kind of two challenges going on simultaneously. Gosh, I love that so much because I think so many of us overcompensate for our childhood or for our insecurities, or we just take on all of the pressures and all of the obligations of what society says, here's who you should be, and here's what you should look like, and here's how you fit into our group. Um, and unfortunately, we try to buy a lot of that, like instead of doing the internal work, we're like, well, Oh, you can just sell me stuff and it can fix that problem? Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic, right. <laughs> but what yeah. did that look like when you kind of started to make that transition, you know, as a couple of, oh, crap, but now we, we've got some debt. So we had an aha moment. Uh, John and I were up in the mountains and had this fantasy of being able to buy land and build a vacation home. And because we were locked in a car together for an hour and a half on the ride home, we actually came clean to each other, or we like to say came out to each other about our financial state and realized that we had the $51,000 in credit card debt. At that point, I, uh, I realized that we didn't know really where our money was going. So I took about four or five hours one afternoon and I sat down and I looked at every single penny that we had spent over the last year. And it shocked us to see actually where our money was going. We didn't necessarily think we were living an amazing life, but after we looked at the numbers, it told a completely different picture. And we realized that there were some outliers that were the main reasons why we were spending so much money and that we could fix those pretty quickly. I love that so much because just knowing where our money is going, like I think that's step one of budgeting. Before you even create a plan with your money, like where are we right now? Where how are we spending our money right now? Just being willing to engage with those numbers can be so powerful. Once you saw maybe where you were at and how that wasn't necessarily the life, you weren't building the life that you wanted, how, how did you turn that ship around from $50,000 <laughs> in credit card debt? So, yeah, when David looked at our spending and we realized that, you know, we were actually were, were living quite big, but it just didn't feel like we were living big. We started to ask ourselves, well, why weren't we happy with the things that we had and the things that we were doing? And we realized that ultimately we weren't spending according to our values. But the problem was that we didn't know what our values were. So that start, sort of started a conversation between the two of us uh, where we started to ask ourselves, what is it we really wanted in life? What do we want, what do we want to achieve? Why are we here? Um, and it really came down to three things. And ultimately, we wanted to um, save for comfortable retirement. We wanted to uh, travel much more extensively than we had at that point, but to do it on cash rather than credit cards. And then three, we wanted to give back to our community, which up until that time, every time we did give back to our community, it, it kind of hurt us because we really couldn't afford it. And then we realized, well, we weren't really spending according to any of those values. All of our spending was on superficial and temporary happiness. 
And when we were able to um, rein in all that superficial spending and focus on what was more important to us, we were able to pay off our credit card debt. Especially as a couple, it can be so powerful to figure out what matters to you together. I, th- I mean, it's important as individuals, but especially when you're bringing two different people into a relationship and saying, what's important to us? What do we really want to do with our life and what are our values? Because, man, our finances can really empower us and give us the ability to make that a reality. Yes, that, that's absolutely true. When, uh, when Whether in, as individuals or as a couple, it's very important for us, as John mentioned, to understand what's driving us, what's motivating us. And for many individuals, we don't realize that some of the things that we're still holding on to are past, uh, that those can be the things that uh, in, in many cases, sway us into making the kind of purchases or decisions that we're making. And if we don't uncover that, I guess you might say, past baggage, we may be doing things that are to a detriment to our long-term financial picture. And that's why it was so important for us to do that. And when we did, we started to realize that this wasn't just us, that it affects a lot of communities, a lot of different people. And that's why we focus on helping the LGBT community, because so many in the community have that baggage from their past that can make them want to feel like I have to live fabulously or I want to to, to not feel the way I've been feeling uh, and to cover up some of those feelings from the past. And it's possible to make changes in your life and start living fabulously as well as contributing to a long-term better financial picture. One practice that people can implement into their life is when they are making a purchase, asking themselves the question why three or four times why they're making that particular purchase and really dig deep to figure out, is this a purchase I really want to or need to make or am I trying to make up for something else? That's so important because it's like retail therapy is not actual therapy. Like. Right. <laughs> And really sabotage you. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring out what we're trying to what we're trying to achieve by this goal. Um, it's such a fantastic question. I love that. Thank you guys so much for being here. Of course. Thank you so much yes, for having thank us. You we for appreciate having us. it. And for those listening, if this is something that resonates with you, especially those in the LBGTQ community, I would totally check out John and David's podcast. It's called Queer Money, and they are just a delightful resource to, yeah, live fabulously, just not fabulously broke. Their story is such a fantastic example of the reality that we don't have to be perfect. We just have to be a little bit more courageous every day because adventure awaits.